All right. All right. Now we have officially started. Um, welcome to the webinar about open courseware in Europe. Um, this is uh, this is based on a project we're running with uh, a couple of other universities around Europe to uh, see what we can do with open courseware in Europe. Um, so first of all, the slide about Creative Commons. I will uh, publish my uh, the presentation will be published on the open courseware EU. Can other other people hear me? I see that Andre, okay. Andrea, the problem is yours. So you uh, you can do the um, audio setup wizards to help you. But I'm gonna continue. So we'll publish the um, slides on uh, slideshare.net slash OCW EU. And I will post the link later on on Twitter. So uh, first of all, who am I? Um, I am the coordinator of the TU Delft Open Education team. So I'm responsible for our Open Courseware program, but also for our uh, MOOCs at the uh, edX. I'm assistant to uh, Anka Mulder as an Open Courseware uh, president, Open Courseware consortium, and the project leader of this uh, European project, Open Courseware in the European Higher Education context. Um, I tweet a lot on uh, WF van Valkenburg, and um, but I'm not reading the Twitter right now. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Uh, that one I'm following now, and uh, the link to the slide share. All right, the agenda today. Uh, first of all, introduction, some objectives of the project, results, future plans, and room for questions. All right. Um, when we started this project, um, uh, or the reason we started this project is that we thought that there were uh, open courseware in Europe was not as big as it should be. Uh, I have here a map of uh, of Europe, and you see a, a cluster in uh, Spain and a couple of uh, universities in uh, in uh, the UK, and um, one in uh, Netherlands, or two in the Netherlands, one in uh, two in France. No in Germany, no in Poland, no in Italy. So um, we thought, hey, what can we do to improve that? And that's why we defined this project. And uh, the European Commission was nice to uh, give us the grant to run this project for two years, and we're now in the second year. Um, so if we look at situation in <coughs> In Europe, um, we have many different countries with many different languages, cultures, uh, and, and such. We have already have a lot of brick and mortar universities. Um, we have a very long tradition in the traditional uh, uh, way of teaching, and I think we're pretty conservative in regards to education. The good thing I would say is that universities face budget cuts due to the euro crisis, and that means that they have to rethink uh, the things they are doing. So um, the consequence is that Europe is lagging behind, but uh, the euro crisis gives us a good opportunity to do uh, new things here. Um, so this is the project, uh, Open Courseware in Europe, and how to make use of its full potential for virtual mobility. And we're uh, a lot looking at um, what are the limitations and the, the uh, obstacles to, to use open courseware in Europe more. Uh, that's, that's the main focus of the, of the project. Um, so who are the partners? Um, we have uh, six uh, universities. Uh, the University of Polytechnique Madrid, the Vet Agro uh, in, in from, from the University of Lyon, uh, TU Delft, my university, University of Barcelona, and the KU Leuven in Belgium. And we have uh, two third parties, and that's Creative Commons and the Open Courseware Consortium. And below you see uh, the members of the project, and this was in uh, Barcelona. We had a meeting. Um, so the objectives of the, of the project is to facilitate virtual mobility. So creating uh, preconditions for a strong OCW framework, uh, closer cooperations between European institutes, 
mutual use of materials and, and maybe even joint degrees, but we'll see. And uh, the last one is enhance quality and increase the uses of online courses. Um, this is uh, what we defined, I think, uh, three years ago. And um, uh, that was before we had all the uh, new development like MOOCs and uh, things like that. So um, uh, it's an interesting world and a lot of change since we started this project. Um, we have defined four phases in this uh, project. The first phase was the research. So we did, did a lot of desk research, research about uh, see well, what's happening, um, what's already there, uh, what models there are, um, uh, some innovations, uh, comparing uh, uh, national policies uh, and the role of the governments and uh, those things. The second phase, we had a couple of workshops to, to see, uh, to get input from experts. We did one at the Open Courseware uh, Consortium uh, meeting in, uh, in Cambridge uh, last year. And uh, we had one in Leuven. We had a workshop in Barcelona. Uh, so we had uh, quite some uh, workshops. And uh, now we're going to the final reports. So we're getting all the final reports uh, together. Uh, but also we're doing two other workshops before that. And uh, the last phase would actually be that we're founding uh, something like an, an European uh, branch of the Open Courseware Consortium um, so that we keep the uh, cooperation between universities even after uh, the project is over. Um, we're already making some steps uh, there. Um, so if you look at the research uh, deliverables, um, we uh, did an ana analysis of the existing research and best practices. Um, we created models for sustainable corporations between higher education institutes uh, on OSW. We're creating a student mobility handbook. We ha have made a comparing and assessing national policies and the role of the government. And uh, we combined it with some other alternatives, uh, initiatives around that. So some of the results. Um, we, we did a survey uh, to identify successful practices. We did an analysis of all the current open license practices in Europe. Um, we're looking at, uh, especially in the, in the context of the virtual uh, student mobility, we're looking at some innovations. And um, MOOCs is one of uh, those things. And we're comparing and assessing national policies and government roles. Um, so. First, the survey. Uh, the aim was to identify successful practices for the implementation and use of OCW and OER in higher education, and especially focused on the student uh, mobility. Um, and uh, we had uh, 31 uh, institutions who uh, responded to it from 14 uh, different countries. Um, and you, you see here that um, 81 uh, were. Uh, involved with open courseware and, and 19 uh, defined it more as open educational resources, so not s specifically uh, courses. Um, if we look at the results, um, here you see that uh, well, why, why they are doing that uh, and facilitate virtual physical uh, mobility is only 16 percent, so it's not very hard. Uh, very high is to encourage the use of OER in, in your own institution. And also very high is, is to facilitate the creation of OER and facilitate the sharing of OER. Um, and you see other uh, reasons. We continue. Um, we lo looked at, um, and I hope you can all read this uh, slide. Um, we looked at why you use OER, and we yeah we created a mind map for that, and that's created with. Uh, with the workshop we did in, uh, in Cambridge. Um, later on, you can look at it online uh, in, on a bigger screen. I hope you can see it. Uh, for me, the uh, letters are very small. Um, so I'll leave it for now. And um, I'll go on. Um, the second thing we looked at is the open licensing in Europe. Um, yeah, the start is that there is a uh, European Commission's directive on copyright. Um, but uh, as, as always is with uh, directives, they have to be implemented in each country. And you see that each country does that differently. 
and um, that doesn't make it much easier for sharing content. Um, and um, the, the, there is an exemption for education news, uh, but it's based on the country law, and, uh, and not every country has done the same thing uh, uh, here. Um, so uh, we looked at it, and the conclusions here are that it's a very fragmented, insufficient, and non-uniform solutions around uh, Europe. And um, there is a big discrimination uh, against online teaching. Um, there's a lo lot more is allowed in the classroom than out than in the online uh, environment, the online teaching environments, which you copyright. So you, you as a teacher, you are allowed to, to to make a copy of a book and hand it out in the classroom, but uh, you're not allowed to do the same thing like in an online uh, environment. Um, there are also there's a lack of international uniform rules, and um, yeah, the education is strong public interest, um, and we think that there should be given more uh, mandatory limitations on that. Um, the good thing is that with Creative Commons, you can work around a lot of these things, um, but the yeah the fragmentation is not helping uh, helping people. Um, we also looked at, um, yeah, how, uh, we have the 40, uh, 46 uh, OCWC member websites uh, inspected, and the conclusion was we're really bad uh, at uh, the open content licensing. So um, uh, Ignasi, uh, Ignasi Labastida from the uh, uh, University of Barcelona made, uh, did, did this research, and um, yeah, his conclusion was that there's a lack of licensing on the home page. There are a lot of different licensing notices, uh, links to different licenses. License depends on the platform you use to access the content. Uh, it's not clear who is the copyright owner. And, um, there are a lot of examples of things that were not very good uh, here. Um, he um, specifically uh, showed also his own uh, university uh, open courseware website that also had a lot of problems. And, I'm sure that our open course uh, site also has some problems here. Um, so uh, even we, uh, uh, as, as members of the OCW consortium, are already having problems with it, and that's I think uh, uh, it indicates the, the 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 thing in the pri previous slide that it's very hard for everyone to to look at and to uh, to manage uh, to to do, to do it right. Um, the fourth thing is that we looked at open policies, and um, when we written the proposal, the, we said we would do uh, an own uh, survey on that. But um, when we started with the project, uh, UNESCO and OECD uh, already were doing a uh, survey. So what we did is uh, we created an OER policy registry on the uh, wiki of the Creative Commons. And uh, there are 66 open policies available, and um, yeah, please submit yours if if it's not there and you think it's a uh, good uh, contribution. Please submit it there. It's a wiki, so you can edit yourself. Um, it gives a it's a very helpful if you want to start with an open with an open policy uh, as as a university uh, or uh, as a country. It can be very helpful. Um, so the future plans we're working on, um, we're working on scenarios for the promotion of student virtual mobility. Uh, that's a project that is run by Edmundo Tovar from the University of Polytechnic Madrid. Um, and he's also looking at guidelines and recommendations for successful implementation of OCW. So what do you need and uh, w what should you watch when you start using o OCW? And also about the uh, important thing is about the quality and accreditation. Um, the fourth thing is the, is the case study uh, library, uh, and uh, that will be posted in a couple of weeks. Uh, we we have a lot of yeah additional uh, items on on the open uh, policies, and we will do a workshop on that uh, uh, in uh, the Bali uh, conference of the OCW consortium. Um, so um, we have we'll do a lot of workshops and presentations in the next couple of months, and um, 
Uh, first of all, during this week, the Open Education Week, we'll do another, so we'll come back to that in the next slides. And um, we'll have at the OCWC Global Conference in, uh, in Bali from 8 to 10, we have two presentations. One is on the legal and quality guidelines, and one is on the OER policies. Um, and uh, next to that, we have uh, workshops. Uh, it's, it's actually uh, two workshops uh, next to each other, 11 and 12 of June. Uh, the first is looking at scenarios of virtual mobility, and the second is a workshop on student mobility. So one is looking from the organization, and uh, one is looking from the users. And uh, we're combining that in two days in, uh, in Madrid, organized by the uh, University Polytechnic Madrid. Um, so during uh, this week, uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, webinars and events um, to, to emphasize this and to help them. Um, we had last, uh, yesterday, um, Ignasi organized, uh, organized a good practice uh, of a webinar on good practice on op content licensing. And I think yesterday was in English, and I think today he's doing it in Spanish. Uh, on our website, there's a whole list with all the events on our blog. Um, Cable Green is uh, on Wednesday is doing uh, a uh, webinar on Open Policy Network and about a new version of Creative Commons, and especially what's new for education. Um, on Wednesday, uh, I'm organizing together with uh, Robert Schuer. He is already in this uh, in this webinar and with uh, Surf. He's organizing, uh, uh, we are organizing an, uh, a big event uh, with the different focuses uh, about uh, open courseware. Uh, the event will be in, in Dutch, but it will be streamed online. And on Friday, uh, there's also an event in the University of Lyon, and that's in French. And uh, Edmundo Tavar uh, created a very nice uh, video about the uh, mobility scenarios using OCW. And I'm sure that Igor can post a link in the chat. Um, yeah, the, the second one, the second uh, webinar of Ignacy is today. Uh, um, so that was basically my story, and I, I think it is a good, a good way to um, let everyone ask questions. What? What do you want to know? What's missing? So you can do it by chat or raise your hands. I see some hands raised, but uh, I think that's still from entering the course. Um, so are there any questions? I hear something. And Laia, are you? Do you have a question? Are you writing it or? Laia Dimitar. How about CU? Can you tell me what CU is? Southeast European University. Ah, um, I' not sure. Um, um, that they are not involved in, in this uh, project, uh, but uh, I, I thought there uh, uh, we doing uh, or we made a proposal for open courseware in STEM education. Uh, we, we posted that uh, in uh, January, and um, I think uh, they are one of the partners in this project. The project is uh, have 55 partners. And that's uh, an academic network on, on using open courseware in, in STEM education. And a lot of European uh, universities are involved in that uh, 
projects and hopefully uh, this summer we'll hear if, the, uh, if we get the grant from the EU to start with that project and it will give a very big boost to uh, open course for an open education in Europe I think. Um, what I mean is that the Euro crisis is, is a, a chance for, uh, for for OCW or open education. I think that uh, a lot of universities uh, have a, are having uh, budget cuts, and that means that they um, uh, that, that they uh, will um, will have to rethink what they are doing. And I think that with open courseware and uh, open educational resources and open education is a great way to uh, reduce costs but also to uh, in same way also uh, improve the quality so if we share uh, a lot of the things we have with each other uh, we we all can get it better and cheaper um, another i think very interesting movement is what you see in the US is with the open textbook uh, movement um, um, a lot of uh, states are, are making uh, are doing real good stuff there with with open textbook and um, making them better books than the, the ones the publisher uh, are uh, delivering for a, a much lower price. Uh, I saw I think yesterday also a new initiative from uh, David Wiley uh, in this uh, regard, and I think that Europe is not doing all there, and I think it is a good way to to make uh, to, uh, to make education more affordable to a lot of people. Um, if I see in our university uh, how much money students are spending on books per uh, per semester, it's, it's uh, quite a lot of money. So uh, we can lower that, then it uh, uh, makes uh, education much better accessible. Gains on costs of of an OCW for universities. Um, I, I, I see um, a lot of different um, ways there. Yeah, I think it, it depends also on the focus of what you have as open, open courseware. Um, if I look at my university, um, first of all, we have with our open courseware website always focused on on, um, on keeping low costs. And um, also uh, make it uh, organized in such a way that it doesn't cost the teacher a lot of time. Um, so uh, th that were important uh, starting point for us. And um, we could say that because we started with open course, where we got uh, we're a traditional research university, and that we got a lot more attention to uh, education because of w w we started with open courseware. Um, so um, it, it really um, it helped us uh, focusing uh, on on education again, and uh, that was really good and is really good for our institution. And um, it, it's for now we're just uh, months ago we announced that we're starting with the MOOCs on the FX, and uh, last year we announced that we're starting with an online master program. And that's all because we uh, we started out with open courseware, and so it has been. Uh, and like an uh, enabler for a lot of new th thinking and a new and ways of doing it for the university. So um, it, it's uh, the, the gain is not um, it, it is it's very much indirect gain and not direct. You can say uh, it, 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 um, it's it's direct money you get back. Um, but um, at, at my university, uh, everyone is convinced about open open courseware. And, and they see it as a as a great way. Uh, it also attracted a lot of you know, marketing attention to to a university, and as, especially because of uh, Anka Mulder, who is the president of the Open Courseware Consortium. Other other questions. Scroll through. So 
So the presentation will be posted here on slideshare.nuts.net slash OCWEU. I will post it uh, after the, the session. And also this session uh, is recorded, so the link will be provided on the Open Education website. Are there other questions? I see Andre is writing. <laughs> OK. Um, if there are no other questions, then I, I would like to thank you all for uh, joining this uh, webinar. And I hope uh, it, uh, you, you gained some knowledge and uh, you liked it. And uh, I hopefully I will see some of you in one of the conferences or online on uh, Twitter. So thank you very much. And I will stop the recording. <laughs>